London Fire Brigade. The people here today who represent the London Fire Brigade. A very warm welcome especially to the family, to the family of George Arthur Roberts for being here today <laughs> as we commemorate not only his service but also his life. As you all know, George fought in the First World War and of course this year is the 100th anniversary of the cessation and the end of that war. We here amongst us as people from our BME communities are especially proud, especially proud that George was the first identifiable fire officer in the London Fire Brigade that came from within our community. The journey that started in Trinidad while Queen Victoria was still on the throne and he passed away in 1970 having spent all his life in this country after the First World War, living up the road not that far away in Campbellwood. A bit of background today for those of you who don't know. Two years ago, Southwark Council ran a competition, competition I should say, asking the community who they thought should deserve a blue heritage plaque. And they were given some pointers. And the community chose George Arthur Roberts to be presented with a blue heritage plaque. And some of us here today were present when that commemoration took place. And so myself and others within the London Fire Brigade also felt it would be apt, in fact, it would be more than apt to do the same for our organisation. And that brings us here today. As you can see, we have a lineup of speakers that are important that these people are here to speak on occasions like that. Because it tells you, all who are gathered here today, that the importance that the London Fire Brigade places on its diversity. And our continuing struggle may not be the right word, to make sure that we are diverse and that we represent the community that we so proudly serve in London. One of the things I think we also need to remember at this time, in terms of the year 2018, is it is a landmark year for black history in the world. The 50th anniversary of the death of Martin Luther King. The 50th anniversary of the civil rights protest at the Mexico Olympics. And also the 50th anniversary Rips of Blood speech by Enoch Powell, a speech that led to the Race Relations Act, a speech that led to our great nation doing a lot more around race relations. And the correlation, the correlation to today is that people like George Arthur Roberts started that integration. George Arthur Roberts started to be a representation in a service that clearly had none at that time and continues today to make things a lot better than they were. Not a lot has changed at New Crossfire Station since George has changed. <laughs> Does a lot need to change? It gives us a constant reminder of some of the conditions that people worked in and not all of those reminders are negative. See in the yard today, we have a very old appliance and a type of appliance that George would have ridden on. Maybe the ladder might be different during his service in the Second World War. And of course, something nice and bright and shiny and new. And I hope today you take advantage of that and take some photographs with that, both old and new. So, without further ado, I'd now like to introduce you to our next speaker. London Commissioner and a very, Danny very Cross warm welcome to New Cross Fire Station on this absolutely amazing occasion. And it is fabulous to see so many people here today celebrating what is an amazing achievement. I was lucky enough to be at the unveiling of the blue plaque in 2016. And the more I learned about George Roberts, the more I decided 
that he would definitely be somebody I would like to have dinner with. He sounded like the most fascinating, incredible, amazing man. And the more I heard about the stories of his life and his service, and what he stood for and what he represented, he is truly the spirit of the London Choir Brigade today. The service, commitment and dedication that he gave during his time both serving in the war and then as a firefighter here at New Cross was outstanding. And to have him recognised in this way as the first recognisable firefighter in the black and ethnic minority community is so important to me. For everything I stand for about the London Fire Brigade, about how we should integrate with our communities, about how we should be welcoming our communities into our fire stations, and how London Fire Brigade should look like the community we serve, to have this plaque here, to know that it will generate interest, people will knock on the door, people will ask questions, and people start that conversation about what it means to be a firefighter, and what it meant for George to be a firefighter all that time ago. And I'm so grateful for Mike Cotton to bring down the turntable ladder, to show that piece of history. In the fire station is the oldest active fire station in Europe, where George served, and where he rode a fire engine like that. To tie all that together in that seamless history is just amazing for me. And to have all these people here with the connection they have with George, with the London Fire Brigade now, with the fire cadets who are our future of the London Fire Brigade, it just fills me with such pride. And on a Sunday morning, to be standing here looking at you all and thinking about what this represents, it just makes me think that I'm the luckiest person alive having the job I do and being able to be at events like this to learn about amazing people like George. Also to look at the London Fire Brigade family and all the people that represents. And to look at what we're doing now about interacting with our communities, about making our communities safer. And we need to do more. We haven't done enough yet. Not by a long way. And that's the work we're doing now because every time there's a fire, every time there's an accident or an incident, I'm thinking to myself, what could we do to have prevented that and to make people safer? And the only way we can truly do that is to know all of our communities, is to know the different groups there, is to know about all the different people so that we can identify them, so that we can go and talk to them and we can make that difference. And we all have a part to play in that. If we're not all here wearing this uniform, thinking about how we can make the people who live, work, travel in London, how we can make them safer and how we can make their day better, then we're in the wrong job because that's what we're here for. We're here for public service and that is what George stood for all that time ago and that's what we do now. So it gives me immense pride to be here today, to see all of you here, to be able to talk to you afterwards and just to know that you're here serving London now as George did and this plaque will tell everyone who passes by here exactly what a hero he was and what a fundamental part of the London Fire Brigade he was. Thank you all very well much. Well to be here today to commemorate the life of George Arthur Roberts, um, who, as you've heard from previous speakers, was not only the first um, black firefighter in the London Fire Brigade, but was also a soldier, community leader, and a proud Londoner. And given the comments on South London, I'd say I'm sure he was a proud South Londoner, <laughs> <laughs> speaking as one myself. Uh, born in Trinidad in 1890 and standing at an impressive six feet two, George served in the First World War, as you've heard. He fought in the Battle of Blues and then in the Battle of the Somme, where, according to the notes I was given um, in preparation for this, he earned a reputation for throwing bombs back over enemy lines. So um, I think that's quite impressive, and I'm very glad that he was on our side in the London Fire Brigade. Uh, he was definitely somebody you'd want on, on your side. Uh, too old to fight in the Second World War, um, as, as you've heard about the timeline, George, George joined the London Auxiliary Fire Service and started his service here in 1939. And I was just thinking about what that meant. What would it have meant to be a firefighter during the Second World War? Uh, an unbelievable job that people had to do during the Blitz. Um, and the amount that people saw and what they had to withstand themselves was just incredible. And I think it's worth remembering all the work of all those firefighters at the time, what an incredible service they gave and George gave to, to London. And during the war, um, George Roberts became a leading firefighter, an important member of the wartime discussion group for workers. 
And the firefighters present today will really know, um, as I said, what that, what that meant. And we owe a particular debt to all the firefighters throughout history. But if you think about that, quite recently we celebrated the 150 anniversary of London Fire Brigade. And George joining in 1939 came quite a long way through that history. So um, it took a long time for London Fire Brigade to have their first, our first um, black firefighter. And actually we know that we're still a long way from perfect on diversity. And it, it would be wrong today to do anything other than reaffirm um, our commitment, the Commissioner's commitment, my commitment, the Mayor of London's commitment to making sure that London Fire Brigade is the most diverse fire brigade, not just in the country, but in the world. And that will take a lot of work, a lot of work from people present, both voluntary and professional, and a lot of work both from the support group, but also from uh, people working on this full time and we are going to put resources into it, we are putting more resources into it and we're determined that we're not just standing unveiling a plaque to George Arthur Roberts and saying that was amazing, we're actually also building on the legacy of the game and making sure that we not only have um, the best fire brigade in, in the world which I'm sure all of us agree we already do have. You see a picture of my mom in it, my grandmother. And, um, well, a lot has been said of what I was going to say. Um, all those amazing things he seemed to have done in his life. I, I, I can't understand how he packed so much into his time. The, the League of Coloured Peoples, found a member of the British Legion, World War I, AFS. It, it seems there's no end to his energy and his zeal and resource, as they said on, when they awarded him his British Empire Medal. Um, and actually, I just started out looking up my family tree. <laughs> and I came across a lovely cousin of mine who's here, Kevin, and we started chatting, and also my wonderful great aunt, Terry, who was the wife of George Arthur's son, Cyril. And we started doing that hunt together, and I wandered into a bookshop in Liverpool, and I picked up a book called The Motherland Calls by a gentleman called Stephen Ball. Well, there's a um, well-known local historian there. He is there putting his hand up for us. <laughs> so when I picked up that book, I saw a paragraph in it about my great-grandfather. And I thought, I can't believe it. The stories I've heard are actually true. And I contacted Stephen Ball by email. And I said, what do you know about him? And extraordinarily, he told me he had nominated him for a blue car. Based on his, based on his achievements, and I thought, oh, good. Well, I shall back off and let that happen. And when I heard he won the blue plaque, I rang them up and I said, "When's the ceremony? Can I come along?" And they said, "You are the ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't organise this ceremony, it's not going to happen. It's just going to be us standing together and unveiling a little blue plaque." And I put the phone down and I turned to my husband and I said, what the hell do I do now? And he said, start the mayor. So I rang the mayor of Southern and she said yes straight away. I then contacted the acting high commissioner for Trinidad and Tobago and he said yes straight away. And I was thinking to myself, well, this is now a very uh, important person and an important ceremony. All three local MPs said yes to me. And when the actual ceremony took place, it was overwhelming. People will remember I was a bit tearful of the day uh, because it was just incredible. So when I think about George Arthur, I think about one person in my life who was very, very important to me, a lady called Violet Roberts, who was his second daughter. Auntie Violet was the first to tell me about him when I was probably about 13 years old. I didn't believe what she said to me about him because I said, if that was all true, I'd have heard about it. I've been living in London all my life. And, you know, I was a kind of a bookish child, perhaps I'm a doctor. So I used to like reading and history and all that sort of thing. Never heard of this guy. So for a long time, I never took it seriously. I last saw my aunt in 1999 before she died. She'd gone blind due to glaucoma. And of course, as would be the case with my aunt, the 
daughter of George Arthur Roberts. She was trying to learn Braille in her 80s so that she could get on with her life independently. And she told me the amazing stories again. And I said, none of this could be true. And I went back to London, Googled it, because by then we had Google, and saw his name in the Scotsman as the first black man to join the Middlesex Regiment. So when I think about my great-grandfather, who I regret to say I never met, but I can say Violet is like a human uh, form of him. She looks like him, she talks like him. He was an extraordinary man who I never got to know, but who I hope will be a role model someone, young black people especially, young black kids like my nephew and my niece, can look at and say, this is someone whose life I can emulate. If I can't help myself, I can get out there and help other people. And I think that's a crucial message of George Arthur's life. Um, we in our family try to emulate all of that, but, but I really hope that when people look at ceremonies like this, which is absolutely overwhelming, thank you to the FBU, thank you to the London Fire Brigade, thank you to uh, Danny Cotton, whose support has just always been amazing, and all the other people who've been so kind, my wonderful family, who always turn out for me. That's incredible. And the rain here. And, uh, you know, thank you so very much for this red park, which is, I hope, going to be a unique thing that, as Danny says, people will see and say, yes, I could join the fire brigade, because this guy did it back in 1938. And that would be a true legacy of his life. Thank you very much. Yes, I know that was especially for George. Yes. Oh, is that the time you did it? Thank <laughs> you.